Good evening, everyone. Just going to give this a minute to make sure everything is logged in. And I will start at um, 7.30. All right, so it is 7.30, fingers crossed, um, everything goes smoothly tonight. Uh, my track record with this stuff hasn't been so great, and um, I've troubleshooted as much as I possibly can, so um, please bear with me. Um, I'm going to be demonstrating tonight how to make a coffee carrier. Now, Stampin' Up! in our mini catalog has come out with... A coffee carrier made out of a craft cardstock and that is on page 9 of the mini catalog right here and then it has these mini coffee cups that um, I think it's they're three and a half inches tall by about two and a quarter I don't currently have these in stock so I'm going to use some little mini catalog um, catalogs mini coffee cups that I've had on hand. They're just a little bit smaller. Um, they're about two and three quarters tall. And the diameter is, I want to say they're probably about the same width. They're um, actually slightly smaller, but um, I'm going to use these and they work just as good. The difference is the height in the carriers. Obviously, if I had the Stampin' Up! ones, they would fit better. So, what I'm going to do, let me see, all right, get rid of the catalog. Okay, so you may have seen a post a little while back where I did a Halloween version of a coffee carrier. And I actually just used the Stampin' Up! one, so I'm going to move this just for now. And they come like this, there's, uh, I believe, 10 in a package. They're not overly an expensive thing, so yeah, you get, um, I'm sorry, I apologize, eight, but it's five dollars, so that's a good value, and they come together like this. There's no gluing involved. You do just kind of pop it up, flip them upside down, and you'll see that there's these uh, tabs here, so you drop, <laughs> my hands don't want to rock this side down, this one first, and then you take the sides in, pop it under, and then you take this one, which has that little tab, and you push it under. And then you have a little carrier that stands. And then when you decorate them, you can get something that looks like this. So this was my Halloween one, um, but I decided, I wanted to challenge myself, think a little bit outside the box because many times these products disappear, meaning Stampin' Up! will retire them and then we can't get them anymore and you're left wanting more or you find them somewhere in a local craft store, but they're just not the same. So I decided I really wanted to figure out how to make it myself so that I can use these throughout the year once uh, these do get retired and fingers crossed maybe Stampin' Up! will carry them over to our new annual catalog next June. Um, not only that, it, you can make them in any colors you want. So this is the one that I had posted a sample of and my base color here is Crumb Cake and the designer series paper that I used is also from page 9 in the mini catalog and that one is called Heartwarming Hugs Designer Series paper. So it's this paper right here. This is a big suite that Stampin' Up! offered in this catalog. So um, the suite itself is $123.25 and that's US dollars. But everything that you see pictured here on this page would be included in the suite. So you would get the paper, you would get two stamp sets, one has coordinating dies, the carrier, the cups. Um, this is 
a double mini embossing folder. So they're just a little bit sh uh, narrower than our original embossing folders, but you get two different designs. You get a ribbon, you get a trim, and then you get stars. So there's a lot in here for the money. And then that was what I created these from. And because they're a little bit of short uh, on the short side, if I was to just stick them in the carrier, they wouldn't stick out from the top. So I just add some paper uh, party fill, filler that I had just so like if I was giving it to somebody uh, and I wanted them to see the cup decorated it would pop them up like that hopefully that makes sense okay but when I was playing around and practicing and all that stuff I decided to change it up a little bit and I decided that I'm going to make it using trimming the town which is this one right here and the color is actually pool party and then I use the designer series paper from the trimming the town and that one is on page 25 of the mini catalog now there seems like there's going to be a lot of steps when I show you how to do this so I just want to show you the page 25 and this is another suite that comes with the paper coming home bundle so it's a stamp set with matching dies some embellishments and then a combo ribbon pack of uh, old olive and poppy parade and then it's trimmed with gold on the edge and I thought this one was fun because although the hug, uh, heartwarming hugs has a lot of colors in it I liked that there were blues in this one and I wanted to feature something that's a little non-traditional as far as Christmas colors go a lot of people, you know, you think red and green. So for this, I decided I'm going to go with pool party. And I don't want you to look at this and get scared because it's really just kind of my all-in-one template here. And I will uh, work on posting uh, these directions on my Facebook page. That way you can refer to them later on. I don't, I didn't send out... Um, any information ahead of time so if you're watching me I appreciate this and um, this will be the first time that I'm going to try to post this on YouTube so you can refer to it later on um, but basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a piece of cardstock and you will need two pieces of cardstock to make one carrier so whatever I show you you're basically gonna make it on one piece of cardstock and then duplicate it on another so you'll have two matching pieces Whatever we cut on the first one, we're also going to cut on the second one. Same thing with scoring. And it's my template looks like there's a lot on here, but I assure you it, they're really quick and easy steps to follow. Um, and I'm going to walk you through, like I said, everything. So basically, we're going to start with a piece of cardstock that measures 9.5 by 8.5. At the 9.5 inch side, we score at um, two and seven eighths and then let's see eight and three quarters okay then we need to create a score line right here which is going to measure three inches from this score line right here and I will show you how to do that when we turn it to the eight and a half inch side we're going to score it at two and a quarter and then four and three quarters and you can see on my template, this section says to remove. And we have a diagonal line here. And then it says to remove. And then we're going to take these two squares out. And when you follow all the directions on this one, we end up with a template that looks like this. And I know my writing, my notes are just a little bit small to show up on the screen. Um, but once we follow those steps, you end up with a piece that's going to look like this. And at that point, the template basically says we're going to cut on this line up to this score line so we'll trim here and then we're going to measure in from the edge one and three quarters in from the edge two and a half and we're going to connect those points and then we're going to remove this section so again I'm going to walk you through how to do this all but I'm just showing you the template that I'm going to follow and after you've done this on two pieces of cardstock you should have two templates or two pieces of paper that look like this Okay, so let's get started and I will refer back and forth to my um, to this template 
And if you have any questions with what I'm doing or if something doesn't make sense, make sure you put it in comments because I don't see you unless you give me a thumbs up, add a heart, um, anything like that. Uh, leaving a comment is the one way that I can actually see that you're there uh, using the switcher software. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna take my paper trimmer to do all of my scoring and cutting. If you have a scoring board or the Simply Scored scoring tool, uh, you could use that as well. But for the sake of the video, I'm just gonna stick with this. And I'm using Pool Party, like I said. All right, so I'm just gonna trim my paper to nine and a half, like that. Okay, and then I'm actually gonna start on the eight and a half inch side. So this is nine and a half, I'm gonna turn it so it measures eight and a half across. And then I'm gonna line up to two and a quarter. I hope you can see that, I know that the zoom isn't close enough, but this is at two and a quarter. And I'm gonna score, slide it down to four and three quarters, and then I'm gonna score. Okay, now I'm gonna turn it back to the nine and a half inch side, and I'm gonna score it at two and seven eighths, and then eight and three quarters. Just like that. Okay. I'm going to close this bar because I don't need the extension open. And I'm going to move this up. So it's a little hard to see the score line, um, but it's right here. So this is the 2 and 7 8 score line. And what I do is I'm using the bottom because of the way the Stampin' Up! Uh, trimmer is, if I push the paper all the way up to the top, I lose... The numbers in the measurements so I'm gonna shift to the bottom and I'm gonna line up the bottom to three and I can see that this is my three inch line all the way up and then I'm going to score up until this four and three quarter score line that we made on the eight and a half inch side so I'm gonna score three inches right down to this score line okay Now I've already done this a second time on another piece of paper for this, so I have my second piece already done. <clears throat> and I'm gonna combine my template all into this one step here, just so that we're not, you know, going all over the place. I know I kind of showed it, uh, you know, cutting and then going to one and then cutting out the other, but that's just for the sake of the visual. For doing this, you can you can do it all at you know on one time, or you can do it, um, you know, kind of like one template at a time. So, what I'm going to do now, for me, I found it was best to get straight cuts without folding on my score lines yet. So, um, if you prefer, sometimes um, you like your score lines to be folded that way you can see them a little bit better. But I can see where my score lines are. So I'm not going to fold yet. But what I'm going to do is I'm gonna turn this paper upside down, okay? And actually, let me show you. So, and I and I apologize, I, you know, I'm in my basement, so unfortunately the lighting is what it is. But you'll have a side here that has this skinny scored section. And then over here, it's a wider section because that's your two and seven eight strip. So this would be, um, I think it's about half an inch right here. All right, so we want to make sure whatever we're doing up here is in this little rectangle that's closest to this strip. And hopefully that makes sense. But I'm going to turn it upside down. So now my little half inch strip is here. This is the section I'm working in. And what I want to do is from this score line, is measure one and three quarters inch and I'm just gonna do a little tick mark with my pencil 
And then from the bottom, same thing, from that score line, I'm gonna measure two and a half. And then I'm gonna draw a pencil line in a diagonal connecting those two points. So if it makes it easier, you can cut this whole section out because we don't need that. And you could have cut this section out if it makes you um, feel better not cutting from a score line, like you just could remove that and then you wouldn't have to worry about it. But I'm going from the score line over two and a half and from here, one and three quarters, okay? Before I do any folding, and you can see here's my second piece, it's already measured out. So now I'm going to begin my cutting. So I'm gonna flip it over again. You have this section here, that's the two and seven eighths, and then you have a score line, and then you have this large section right here, which would have been down to eight and three quarters. So I'm just gonna cut up on this score line. Now you don't have to be 100% exact at the bottom because here is the bottom of your box and so no one's really going to see if your cutting is a little off. But when we get up here it's more important to cut really straight. And then I'm going to get rid of this section. Okay. And then I don't need anything in here. I don't need this section right here. Okay, so I'm gonna remove that. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and this is gonna be the top of my box. So I wanna make sure when I'm cutting on this score line, I'm staying as straight as possible. And then I'm gonna cut on this diagonal and I am using my bigger scissors I feel like it gives me the straightest cut and the longest angle. And then I don't need right here. So I'm gonna get rid of this section. Now, you could use this paper that I'm cutting out as scraps, um, you know, for punches or any quick die cutting that you might be using. So you don't have to scribble on it, but I just did that so that you could see what I was talking about. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the second piece. I'm gonna take out this little corner here. This little corner here. Oh, actually I could just go straight across. And then I'm going to get rid of this section here. And then I'm going to cut up from the bottom here. Okay. So now I have two pieces that look exactly the same. The last cutting that I need to do is right up here. So if you can see, there's a score line here and then the straight score line here. So I'm going to cut on this line up to the score line. And this becomes the handle of the box or the carrier. And then I'm gonna do it again on this one. All right, so now we have this flap section. And when you look at the templates, you have these two tabs right here. And so this is that little half inch section we were talking about. So it's very important when you go to assemble this and actually when we cut out the handle that you have these going in an opposite direction. So this would be your left side this is your right side. If you have them both put together like this, then you won't have tabs to secure your box together. And that will make more sense as we get to 
get going on the steps. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one aside. I'm going to fold my score lines. Sorry for reaching over. And just give it a good crease on all four of the bottom score lines. And then right here. Okay. And then we're going to do the same on this one. And right now I'm not really worried about my folds as I am my crease lines because I want this to be creased. Now unlike the Stampin' Up! carrier which is already assembled for you, this does require adhesive for it to come together. So I would recommend some sort of a liquid glue or a really strong glue, especially if you're planning on putting some form of weight in here. So now after I have folded everything, you see we have these two pieces scored and folded. Okay. And so this, like I said, your tab should be opposite. So left side, right side. And these were actually will be putting adhesive and they'll be sticking over. But I'm not gonna assemble this just yet until I do the handle. Now, you could do measurements and then uh, cut out, you could do a punch um, if you have the right size. I am actually using one of our layering squares to cut out this opening here on the top. So you could do one at a time if you're confident that you can line them up after the fact. You could cut one out and then use that one as a template, completely up to you. Um, or you can do them at the same time. So what I'm going to do is fold all my sides in. I am going to take my ruler and I'm going to measure down about three quarters of an inch. And make a little line there. I'm going to take the rectangle framelit, excuse me, square framelit, and eyeball the center between the two. And then I'm going to use a post it note to just hold it in place. You could use washi tape or some sort of a repositional tape that won't um, shift around when it goes through the die machine. Stampin' Up! does have a new machine. It's the Stampin' Cut and Emboss. I do not have the magnetic platform that they just came out with. I am, however, going to use my old one. Which is under here. And use my acrylic pads. Now, to fit the template through the die machine and to make sure that you don't cut anywhere else you don't you don't want to fold it in half because when you go through it's going to go through all your layers so just fold up that bottom flap and then place this on your platform now I haven't tried this using my old Big Shot I know the width of the Stampin' Up! one is wide enough for the paper without it getting um, affected. So once that's on, I'm gonna crank it through. Take it out, I'm just gonna move this quickly. And then you can see it cut that out. So now I'm going to do the same thing with the second one, but I'm gonna use this one as my template. So I'm gonna lay this down I'm going to line up on the top here, on the sides. And now hopefully, hopefully this works out right. And like I said, you could glue the two pieces together and then run it through the, the die machine. So I'm going to line up on the inside here those four corners I just drew. And hopefully this makes sense. Okay. Bring back this. So 
over here in Massachusetts, our weather has been in the 70s, which is extremely warm for this time of year, which means when it's cold, we're going to freeze. Um, there you go. Put that side through. And I'll be using the machine again, but I'm just going to move it out of the way and finish this step before I do any more cutting. So hopefully, oh, it moved a little bit. Well, that's all right. We'll still go ahead. Okay. Now you could use liquid glue to adhere these two pieces together. I am just gonna use our stamp and seal and I'm just going to add some adhesive here. And with all the other ones that I've made, all my demos and trials and whatnot, I haven't found that the Stampin' Seal has come apart at all. So fingers crossed that it should be okay. All right. So now this is on. All right, and if you see, it bends just like the handle here. Okay, so it bends. The only thing that I will say using cardstock over the craft paper is the craft paper is just a little bit stiffer, so it's a little bit stronger than the cardstock. Um, I didn't have any sheets of craft paper on hand, but I really liked being able to offer a color versus the craft brown. I mean, most of it we're gonna color, cut, excuse me, cover with paper anyway. So before I, I adhere my sides together, I found it easier with the box staying flat, adding my designer paper, and then adhering together. Um, once the box was assembled, I found, you know, you want to make sure your your paper sticks good, and so I wanted to have like that flat surface to push it down on, if that makes sense. <clears throat> And, okay, so you're going to, so I decorated all four sides because I figured no matter which, oops, ignore that my tag is a Halloween tag, <laughs> um, but no matter which side somebody was looking at this, it was decorated. And um, the measurements in between these two sections, so in this large section, it's two and a half inches tall by five and seven eighths long. And then it's two and a half tall by two and seven eighths. So when you cut out your designer series paper, if you wanted to cover that whole section, that's what you would cut it out as. But I went just a little bit smaller, just that way you would still see the border of the pool party. So I have two pieces that are two and a quarter by two and five eighths, and then two pieces that are two and a quarter by five and five eighths. And so this is the side that I used with all the different Christmas sayings in um, uh, different languages. The other side of these cute little wreaths that you could use. And then the little houses, the opposite side are little snowflakes here. But I, I liked these two together. And you certainly could use one pattern for all four sides. You don't have to switch it around. Um, Actually, I am going to, no, I'm going to do this first. Okay. So for my panels, for these sides, I'm just going to use the snail, uh, snail, stamp and seal. It's just such a habit to say snail because we had it for so long. And then stamp and seal has a similar sound. <laughs> So no matter how many times I try to prep myself to say it right, I, I always mess up, but that's all right. How am I doing? Is everything staying in focus there? Hi, Teresa. Sorry, I just saw your comment. Oop. Now the stamp and seal is much stickier than the snail that has retired. Um, the downside is I make a mess with it. 
As far as adhesive goes, I really like the stickiness. Um, I feel like you can do more 3D projects with it as long as you're not really anticipating a huge long-term uh, kind of display with it. But I, I just, I get frustrated with it running out and you have to kind of keep like advancing. Uh, it's just a little hiccup. Once I kind of keep using it, I'll get used to it. Um, but if somebody was to ask me if I liked it, yes, I do. Um, and you also get more in that than we used to provide in the snail. But I find I don't need to use quite as much because it is a stronger adhesive. Okay, so I have my four sides on. Now the sections are already stuck on. Okay, and so don't worry that, oh, what do I do? I already have it stuck. So I just noticed I just flipped it up. And we have our two flaps here and here. You want to make sure that when it's folded under, this is the side we put the adhesive on. Now I am using Tombow, the multi-purpose liquid glue. You could use your stri sticky strip or a double-sided tape, um, and you could also use the Stampin' Seal Plus because that's a much stronger adhesive than the seal. Um, but I do like on these types of projects using the liquid glue, especially if you're going to be putting stuff that's heavy or you know there's going to be temperature changes. So you just lay this on, lining up the edges, stick it together, and then this side, and just hold it for a minute. Okay, and then you'll see it. You can do many of these, store them flat until you're ready to put it together, and then add your adhesive at the bottom. If you're using the double stick tape, you could put the double stick tape on. Um, so if you're using our sticky strip, you know, you could add this on and then store it away until you're ready to assemble, and then just peel that top layer of the tape off, and then you're ready to stick. Now, I've made many of these. I've put the adhesive in the wrong place so then when you're looking at the inside of the box the adhesive sticks up. So one of the things that I like to do is put the adhesive on the smaller corners here, one and two. I am going to use liquid glue like I said that way if you put anything of weight inside it will um, give you a better hold. Go down. All right, and then I'm going to put glue on this side. Okay, and so it doesn't really matter front or back. So now I'm going to take that side. Okay, and then I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to this flap, but I'm not going to go all the way down because if I do, see there's that little hole there, and then um, the glue will all get in there. And then I come in on this side and I just push down. How cute is that, right? It looks like it's hard. It, it's really not, I, you know, I'm spending a little bit more time explaining it than if I was assembling it. I mean, it took me a little bit of time to figure out. And once I got the template down, um, I mean, it, it, they can go together in a matter of minutes. And what I love is... Um, just how cute they are, you know, with a color to them. I mean, they're cute in the craft box. I love them. And the coffee cups that we sell are, like I said, are, are taller and a little bit wider. Um, so when you put them in the box, they stick out a little bit. But still, so that's that. Now, of course, I have glue all over me. Um, okay. So now I'll set this aside, and we're going to work on the little coffee cup. Now on this one, I just threw, um, this was the Halloween bag of candy that was in my Halloween one. And I just wanted to show you, um, you know, you could put different things in here. Obviously you would take 
get rid of that Halloween thing. But I added, you know, uh, some candy. And these are our uh, CeeLo bags that you can get through Stampin' Up. And they have a little mosaic pattern on them. Aren't they cute? So think about, like, holiday colors and holiday candy. I'm thinking, like, the red and green M&Ms. Um, although I don't know if they would last quite as much. So when I filled this one, I used Milky Ways, which are not... Oh, and some Three Musketeers. So those are my least favorite chocolates when you get them in the Halloween pack. But, I, you know, I would do a cute little bow or a ribbon on this one and, you know, stick it in. And then for this cup, when I decorated it, I actually put uh, the little greeting on the top of the cup. And this one <clears throat> says, eat, drink, and be cozy. So I'm going to decorate the other one for you. So you're not sitting here watching me do two of these. So one is already done for us. <clears throat> Excuse me, now I have a frog in my throat. <clears> throat> so I'm going to do the second one. And on my original, oops, I did the label, well, I did the wrap, and then I did the decoration on the sides. So <clears throat> again, because my camera view and I'm not using my iPad, so I can't toggle because I'm worried that my iPad might be old and that could be why I'm having problems with Switcher. Um, so right now I'm just doing one camera off my iPad, I mean on my iPhone. So when you look at it this way, um, you know, if it was standing in front of you, you would see the sides of the coffee cup. Super easy to put together. Set this aside. And this ribbon to die for. This is another ribbon. I, I had contemplating hoarding and never using, but I, I can't. I just, I couldn't. So this was part of our Magic in This Night Halloween Suite. Um, it is the metallic mesh ribbon. But it's that silvery mesh that is just so gorgeous. It's almost like icicly, tinselly, so totally awesome for... Christmas. All right, set this one aside, and I'm just going to take a sip of water so that I don't keep coughing on you. Okay. Sorry about that. So the dyes that I'm using come from the Warm Wraps. I think, I think I'm saying that right. Yeah, Warm Wraps dyes, which is part of that heartwarming hugs sweet <laughs> on page nine. Um, I have some removed because I'm using them, but I just wanted to show you quickly what they look like. So to make the coffee cup wrap, I don't know if I should, so here's the wrap. Okay, so here's the wrap. And then here's this. You cut out two of everything. All right, so you get two of these dies. You'll need to cut out two, this one and this one. And then you end up with two pieces that look like this. And then that, that was the opposite side of the paper. Okay, and then I'm doing this scalloped edge here. Isn't that cute? So there are two dies when you cut this out and you'll see this one and then this one is a little bit shorter. And then, oops, my fingers have a little glue so it keeps moving. If you look at them, they bend in the opposite direction and then this one's slightly shorter than this one and then that's how the dies are. Oops. And that gives you this piece, this pool party or the light blue piece underneath the designer paper. Now, if you look closely at this one, there's these little cutouts. That is these little pieces right here. And there's four of each one because whenever you're doing these, you for one cup, you need two of these, two of these, um, actually two in each size, so basically all four, but I've already pre-done um, this one for the sake of time. 
and then you need two of these in each size. So two in this one, two in this one. And on this coffee cup, the original one, I used the other die, which I just called it the dashes. So that's this one. And on this one, it's this style, okay? So I'm gonna show you quickly how I cut those out. And if I'm talking too much, you can tell me to shut up. I'm fine with that. I worry about my <laughs> explanations, so I do go a little bit slower. But if I'm go if I'm taking too long, you can let me know. That's how I learn. Just be nice. No, no nasty criticism. We don't need any more nastiness in this world. All right. So now I'm going to get the stamp and cut emboss machine out again. Now, my magnetic plate has seen better days, so I am going to still use some post-it note just to make sure things don't shift. For this one, I'm cutting it out in pool party, and you can see I've already cut out the others. So those should be okay without anything on them, but just because they bent a little bit, which... It could be because I don't have the right plate for this machine. And then here's my other wrap. Here are these two. So hopefully you can see this. There's a smaller side and the long side. The smaller side goes towards this edge. And then the bigger edge goes right here. Thanks, Teresa. And right there. Okay. Add my top cutting plate. And then we'll run this through. And that's all you should need is once through. Okay. So there's one. And I'm just putting these away so I don't end up throwing them out. I've done that. Okay. And the nice thing about this new machine is it really has great pressure, so it, it doesn't leave a lot of the little bits behind, which used to drive me nuts, especially prepping for a class. I mean, look, here's all the little bits that came out of this, and I don't have to poke anybody out. Isn't that awesome? Okay. So I'm going to zoom in just a little. Okay. All right. So for the wrap, because this cup is a little bit smaller than, like I said, the Stampin' Up one. You don't need the length of this, um, but I found it easier to wrap it and then trim off the excess than to try to measure it out and figure out where you need to snip. But I'm going to add our little scalloped edge first. And so the way that I did that is I'm just going to add this uh, seal down the edges. Okay. 
Now, the way that I lined them up is you can see the stitching and then the stitching stops at the end of the scallop. It doesn't go all the way down to the edge. So I use this as my guideline of where I want to line up the edge of this. And that allows enough of that scallop to be visible. And then also see through it there. Okay. So um, you just repeat it with all four strips lining up from that edge of the stitched part and then the same thing at the bottom and then on this one and you can't really mess up which side the scallop goes on because one is longer than the other just like the sides on this wrap is longer than the other so if you were to put the longer side on the shorter side you're gonna have an overhang and that's how you know so you can't really mess that up like you don't have to be like oh is it labeled is it side one side two okay so I am going to use the liquid adhesive if this was on a flat surface I probably would just be fine with using the seal but because I am wrapping it, I want to make sure that I get it to adhere well. And then I started where the seam on the cup is and just eyeballed from the top. Right. Now, the downside of liquid adhesive is it takes a little bit longer to set. Um, but once it's on, it's pretty snug. Okay. Just like that. So then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add a little bit of glue here. And then I'm going to add glue on the second one. But I'm not going to go all the way down to the edges because I'm going to trim that part off okay. and then I'm going to start here and then wrap it around And then I'm just going to set this aside for a minute before I trim, trim anything because I want to make sure that it sets and I don't lift it up while it's drying. So you'll see there's a little overhang. I mean, you could certainly just glue it down and just leave it like that, but I'm just going to get rid of the excess. And then what I did for the label on here is um, I used... The stamp set, Warm Hugs. And I used the Eat, Drink, and Be Cozy. And I Like You, the Latte. So on this one, it's the Ink, Drink, Be Cozy. Oh, and Be Cozy. Yeah, and Be Cozy. I said that. And I stamped that one in Pool Party. I added two layers of color underneath. And those were cut out using... Uh, the warm wrap styes. So it's this circle right here, which has like a stitched, uh, stitched edge to it. And then this um, octagon, I think it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't know if you saw me counting <laughs> octagon to cut it out here. And then the color is Poppy Parade and Misty Moonlight. And then to cut out the eat drink and be cozy i just used a half inch, one and a half inch circle punch and stuck it on with dimensionals now 
for the sake of time, I've already done that. So we're just going to assemble that. Like I said, why I'm letting that dry just a little bit. And so I'm going to put dimensionals on the back of the Misty Moonlight. And stick it on top here. And then I'm also, let's see, I like you a latte. I stamped this one in Misty Moonlight. And those are colors featured in this suite. So I thought it was fun to add the labels in different colors. So I like you a latte. And then here's my lid. And all I did was stuck two dimensionals right here. Because I don't anticipate anybody drinking out of these little cups, but you certainly could. They are uh, hot, heat safe. Uh, I mean, if you put hot cocoa in there, you're going to feel it like you would a regular coffee cup. Um, but they are real cups. You know, it's not toy. And so let's put that aside. And take this back. Okay. So like I said, all I did was just figure out where the resistance was and then I just like sticking the scissor in as far as it lets me go without ripping the paper up and then what I do is add a little bit more adhesive there and then I'm going to hold this down now I'm not going to lie I'm a messy gluer So when you watch me and I look like a hot mess, well, I'm a hot mess, but uh, it is what it is with the glue. I don't try to be fancy. I just want to get the job done. Okay. And then I just want to get the excess off my fingers. Keep wipes by your table because Lord knows I stick fingers in the adhesive as well as the ink and then you just stick your little lid on and there's your little cups so you could fill these with some treats if you know somebody that um, has a Keurig little K cups will fit one in each um, you could put some tea bags in here or some real uh, loose tea in a little silo bag and then stick them inside it doesn't have to be coffee you could do hot cocoa you could um, take out you know the measurements so a couple tablespoons of the mix put um, enough for like two or three cups in one and then add marshmallows or something like that in the other and then all they got to do is measure out into um, an actual big mug and have a treat like that um, I don't think this is big enough to add like a soup but you could do hard candies. Um, they're just a lot of fun. And I don't know. I, I like was so excited when I saw that they were offering these coffee cups. Um, but mine are gone. Anyway, let's do the tag. So here is my tag. Super easy to make. I'm still using the designer paper from Trimming the Town. And this time I chose the polka dots. And then this one is people holding gifts and hugging with like scarves. Uh, but I thought this one was fun because it really features all the colors in the paper packs. The other side is just um, like an old olive green stripe. And then trees on this side. So you could even flip it around and do that. That would look really cute together. But I like the polka dots. And so the tag measures two by four and a quarter. And then I'm going to take the delightful tag topper punch. And this is in our annual catalog. And because this paper is directional on the back side, you know, and if they kind of looked at the box and the tag moves, I want the sides to kind of be in the right direction. 
so I don't want to put it in like that. So I want to make sure the tree, even though I'm I'm working on this side, I still want the trees to be upright, if that makes sense. So you just slide this in. These punches are great because you get three different size options width-wise, and you can make these tags as long as you want. So slide this in, punch, and then there's your the top already with a little hole in it. And it's two inches, one and three quarters, and one and a half. So you have a good, I think I said that right, two, one and three quarters. No. Oh, stuff. Two, yeah, one and three quarters and one. Sorry about that. And then this little piece here is one and a half by two and a quarter. And then I took this really pretty pool party sheer ribbon to layer underneath. I cut about eight inches of that. And hopefully that ribbon is still here. My cat was trying to steal it. And I'm just gonna fold the ribbon in half. I'm gonna use a glue dot to hold it in place. And then I'm going to add a glue dot for the back of the ribbon and then to the front. That way it gives it something to stick onto when you add it to this. And then this is going to go on top like that. I'm going to add dimensionals to the back. And then this will go right on top here, just like that. Now the ribbon is, is sheer, um, and the way my lights are shining, it actually makes it look like completely see-through, but it's not. And then for my greeting, oh, Fiona, stop. On top of that is this stamp set right here, wrapped in Christmas, and I used the Let the Joy of the Season Fill Your Heart. It's the same one that I used on the first carrier that I made, but I like the greeting, and it's a good size, so I decided to just stick with it. I've already stamped that on Whisper White, and I used Poppy Parade, and then I'm going to fussy cut it out very quickly. To just kind of silhouette the words and I will forewarn you if I shriek it's because I have a kitten trying to climb up my leg <laughs> unsuccessfully but your nails are sharp okay and then I'm gonna add a couple dimensionals to the back of the greeting goes right here just like that. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can bring the carrier in. Here is the Poppy Parade gold trim ribbon that is from the Trimming the Tra Town uh, suite and it's actually called All the Trimmings Ribbon Combo Pack. Um, and I'm just going to feed through a good amount. So when I put the ribbon on, I wanted it to dangle and not be so stiff in one direction. And I wanted it more on the side than hanging into the carrier. So I gave myself a good amount to kind of tuck it over here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the metallic mesh. I don't really measure, say 
Well, a good maybe 18 inches. This ribbon ties really, really easily. But before I go any further, I want to get this on. So what I did was, so here's where I started to tie a knot. I slide this poppy parade ribbon underneath. sure it's even okay underneath that little knot there and then I kind of gauge because I don't want this to hang lower than the box so that would be the bottom of the box and then I'm going to just tie this off in a knot here so it hangs on its own but it's kind of tucked underneath okay and then I'm going to continue making the bow And the nice thing about this ribbon is it's very forgiving because of like the being that it's mesh. Okay. I'm not really going to get rid of the tails on this one. I like it hanging a little bit longer because it's going to drape over the top of the box like that. And then I'm going to trim this just a smidge. And then that is the carrier. How cute. Okay, and you put your little coffee cups in. So from the top here, you can see the carrier with the greetings. But like I said, they're a little bit smaller. So when you tilt it and look at the sides, you don't really see it. So that's why just a little bit of like, you know, the basket stuffing. Or you can get it at the Dollar Tree um, in different colors. Just add a little layer at the bottom and that will kind of pop up. I, all right. So here's the one that I made for you today. And here is my original. What do you think? Which one do you like better? Oh, need a bigger camera view. Ooh, they were all the way out. All right. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. And um, to next time, have a wonderful night. Bye-bye.